Last week, we took a look at five trail-worthy bikes under $1,200, and with the possibility of another stimulus check coming, I figured we should take a look at five full suspension bikes that you can buy for under $2,400. For this list, we'll be focusing only on the trail bike segment, so no cross-country, enduro, or downhill bikes will be on this list. These five bikes aren't necessarily the best of the best, but these are just five trail-worthy bikes that I found that offer great value in this price range. There are actually a lot of options in this price range, so you can use these bikes as a starting point to research features, geometry, and specs that work best for your style of riding and budget. In no particular order, let's go ahead and get started. The Marin Rift Zone 2 and the Marin Hawk Hill 2. Both options are priced at $1,949, with the Rift Zone being the 29-inch version and the Hawk Hill being a 27.5-inch version. While both bikes are spec'd the same, when comparing the geometry numbers, you can see the industry trend leaning towards more progressive 29ers. The Rift Zone has 5 millimeters of extra travel in the rear, and the head tube angle is also a full degree slacker than the Hawk Hill at 65.5 degrees, and 66.5 degrees for the Hawk Hill. Both bikes come with a 130 millimeter RockShox Recon up front and a RockShox Deluxe Select R in the rear with 125 millimeters of travel on the Rift Zone 29 and 120 millimeters of travel on the Hawk Hill. Both have a 12 speed SRAM SX Eagle drivetrain, boost through axles, tubeless compatible wheels, Shimano hydraulic disc brakes, and a Trans-X dropper post. Everything you could possibly need to rip some trails. Marin also offers a lower $1,600 spec in the form of a Rift Zone 1 and a Hawk Hill 1. With that, you don't get the dropper post. It's an 11-speed instead of a 12-speed drivetrain. It uses an X-Fusion rear shock instead of the rock shocks, and it also has a non-boost rear end. That's definitely not a bad bike, but for $350 more, I think the Rift Zone 2 and the Hawk Hill 2 offer the better value. Next on the list is the Giant Trance 3. Coming in at $2,100, this bike also offers both a 29-inch and a 27.5-inch version, but unlike most bikes with both wheel options, these are spec'd pretty differently. They both offer the SRAM SX Eagle drivetrain, with Shimano hydraulic brakes and a giant contact dropper post, but that's where the similarities end. The 27.5 inch version has a 150 millimeter fork in the form of a RockShox 35 Gold RL, which has the much nicer debonair spring and 140 millimeter rear travel provided by a RockShox Deluxe Select. The wheels are tubeless ready with a 30 millimeter internal width, rolling on Maxxis High Roller 2 tires. The 29 inch version has 130 millimeters of travel up front from a Marzuki Bomber Z2. I apologize if I pronounced that wrong. 115 millimeters of travel in the rear from a Fox Float DPS Performance. This version is also tubeless compatible, but it has a 25 millimeter internal width and it's rolling on Maxxis Minion tires. Kind of seems like an odd spec. I feel like the more aggressive Minions would be on the larger travel bike, and the faster rolling High Roller 2s you would think would come on the shorter travel 29 inch bike. Seems kind of backwards to me, but I'm sure someone at Giant has their reasons for doing so. Another surprising find is in the geometry figures. The short travel 29 has a slacker head angle than the 27.5 by half a degree. Not a huge deal, but kind of surprising given the suspension travel of each. The 29 inch has a 66.5 degree head angle, and the 27.5 has a 67 degree head angle, which just so happens to be the steepest head angle on our list. So if downhill is more your thing, you might be better off looking at a different option. Next up is the Vitus Mythic VRX. Vitus Mythic VRX. One of those or a combination of the two, I don't know. Vitus had the best overall value in the under $1,200 list, and they made this list with their newest trail bike. Coming in right at $2,000, I debated putting it on this list because it's mysteriously vanished from both ChainReactionCycles.com and Wiggle.com where they sell these. While it may not be available to purchase right now, you may be watching this video a few weeks or months or years from now, and I think this bike has enough value to be on this list. You'll just have to be patient if you do want to end up buying one. 
With that being said, this bike is offered in 29 inch and 27.5 inch variants, and both bikes feature 140 millimeters of travel front and rear. Both versions are specced exactly the same, with a Marzocchi Bomber Z2 up front and a RockShox Monarch R in the back. SRAM SX Eagle 12 speed drivetrain, Shimano hydraulic brakes, tubeless compatible wheels with Schwalbe, Magic Mary, and Hans Dampf tires, and to top it off, a Brand X dropper post. They both offer respectable modern geometry with a 66 degree head tube angle. Pink Bike and Vital MTB both have a video review on this bike with lots of good things to say about it. So if you are patient, you could end up with a great bike for $2,000. Alright, so the next bike is the Polygon Siskiyou T8 30th Anniversary Edition. Here's a bike company that I've heard the name thrown around quite a bit, but I've never actually seen one in real life. And after researching this particular model, I'm not sure why I haven't seen it on the trails yet. Coming in at $2,200, this bike has 29 inch and 27.5 inch variants, sort of. I say that because the wheel size is based on the frame size. The small comes in 27.5 inch only, the medium comes in both options, so you do get to choose with the medium size frame, and then the large and extra large frame only come with 29 inch wheels. That's slightly annoying, but listen to the rest of this spec list. It's got a RockShox Revelation fork, RockShox Deluxe RT3 in the back, Shimano SLX 12 speed drivetrain, Tektro 4 piston hydraulic brakes, tubeless wheels on WTB Trail Boss tires, and an EXA form dropper post. The 27.5 inch version has 150 millimeters of travel front and rear, while the 29 inch version has 140 millimeters of travel front and rear. Geometry looks respectable and modern. The Polygon Siskiyou T8 also comes in a non 30th anniversary edition. I originally was looking at that because both bikes are the same price, but a few things I noticed was the regular version is only an 11 speed drivetrain, and even worse, it has an unbranded dropper post. With both versions being $2,200, I would opt for the nicer 30th anniversary edition. All right, so here we are at the end with my final choice for this list, and it is the YT Jeff C 27 or 29 base. This is the most expensive option on the list at $2,300, but this is truly an awesome bike. Like all the other bikes on this list, it does offer both wheel sizes, but their suspension travel borders enduro territory. The 27.5 inch has 160 millimeters up front and 150 millimeters out back, while the 29 inch version has 150 millimeters front and rear. The fork is a RockShox Yari RC with a RockShox Deluxe Select out back. Another bike with SX Eagle 12 speed, but uses SRAM Guide T hydraulic brakes, tubeless DT Swiss wheels, with Minion DHRs front and rear, along with YT's in-house dropper post called the Postman. With a solid spec list, big travel, and long, low, and slack geometry, this bike is ready for anything. The Jeff C also comes with its flip chip geometry, where you can actually change the geometry so you can put it in a high position or a low position. So that's why you'll see two different figures with the head tube angle and the seat tube angle on the Jeff C geometry comparison. I personally own the last generation Jeff C and I absolutely love it. So it's really no surprise that it is here on this list. And because we did it on the last list, I'll go ahead and name a couple honorable mentions that almost made this list, but didn't quite make the cut. Those two bikes are the Specialized Stump Jumper ST Alloy and the Commensal Meta TR29 Origin. A $2,000 full suspension Specialized is pretty impressive, and to be honest, it should probably be on this list. The only thing holding it back is the X-Fusion rear shock. Maybe this is a fine shock, but with minimal editorial reviews and less than stellar consumer reviews, I'd probably feel more comfortable with a RockShox or Fox. With the Commensal, the hardtail version of this Commensal made the cut for the last list, but the biggest thing keeping the full squish version off this list is the weight. Commensal's website states this bike is 35.2 pounds 
which is pretty heavy. And now for a brief rant on bicycle weights. I typically don't mention the bike weights on these lists because it's hard to get an accurate comparison. I say that because if a manufacturer does post their weight, they typically only show the weight of one frame size. YT, for example, listed the weight of their small frame, while Polygon showed the weight of their medium-sized frame. They're also typically weighed with tubes and no pedals. When you get the bike, depending if you convert it tubeless and what pedals you add, you may get a different reading on the weight as well. Bike reviewers will also mention weight when they're doing long-term tests, but again, it's usually just one size. They typically convert it tubeless, plus they have whatever pedals they put on. So you can see there's a lot of determining factors when it boils down to weight. It would be great if the bike industry would come up with a standard to weigh bikes where they just weigh all their frame sizes with tubes in it and no pedals, level the playing field, give the people the information they want, and then the consumer can decide if they wanna shave weight with a tubeless conversion, lightweight parts, or changing things out. So I do mention the weight of the commensal because I did research the weights on all five of the other bikes I mentioned in this list. I found the weights either through their websites or in a bike review, and all five bikes ranged between 30 and 32 and a half pounds. Even with all the inconsistencies in weighing bikes, 35 pounds is still very heavy no matter how you look at it. And that's why the commensal is only an honorable mention. And it's also really only on this list, so I can rant about bike weight. So there you have it, five full suspension bikes that you can buy for under $2,400. There's a lot of options in this price range, but these were just the five that caught my eye and I thought offered a very good value for their price. Any of these bikes on this list will be ready to tackle your local trails and help you progress as a rider along the way. So if you've saved up $2,000, you don't have to spend three, four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 on a full suspension bike to get out and ride some cool trails. What's a full suspension bike that you would like to buy for under $2,400? Let us all know in the comments below. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you aren't already. Thank you for watching and until next week, stay rowdy within reason.